February 17, 2020, Board of County Commissioners meeting will now come to order. And at this time, um, <coughs> we would ask you to stand for our invocation of Pledge of Allegiance. Gracious Fathers, once again, our opportunity and our honor to come before the people of our county and before you and to do the business of our people. We ask that each decision we make will be honorable in your sight and will be the best for those that depend on us to do the right thing in our county. We ask this thing in your blessed name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This time, do we have our youth council members here tonight? Would you please come to the podium and introduce yourself, tell us what school you go to, and just give us a quick, just hello. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Alexis Diana. I'm a junior at Cumberland Polytechnic High School and I'm the current Vice Chair of the Fayetteville Cumberland Youth Council. Um, hello, my name is Caitlin Husky and I also am a junior at Cumberland Polytechnic High School and I have been part of the Fayetteville Cumberland Youth Council for about a year now. Thank right. you all for being present tonight and we ask that you take notes and uh, listen very carefully because we're going to ask you to critique us at the end of the meeting. Will you do that for us? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Oh, they look kind of happy to do that. <laughs> <laughs> they were ready. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Okay. okay, I've got some inductees here. This time, can I ask the family of Wayne Beard, please come forward. Thank you. This, this one's a little awkward for me because you know Wayne was my neighbor, just like all y'all have been my neighbors. Um, but uh, I just want to read what we have here. Emmett Wayne Beard Sr. <clears throat> has been selected as the 2019 Cumberland County Agricultural Hall of Fame inductee. Wayne spent his entire life on his family farm in the Eastover community. He began, began farming as a young boy, helping his father with the family's cattle and row crop operation, which included tobacco, corn, soybeans, and small grains. He was a member of FFA and showed livestock in his 4-H club. He was award, awarded the NC State Farmer's Degree in 1964. At the age of 18, Wayne began running the family farm after his father's untimely death. Wayne graduated from Central High School and Methodist University. While continuing the demands of operating a farm Wayne married the love of his life, Wanda, and they had two devoted children, Wayne Jr. and Janae. Together, the Beard family would operate and run a 100-acre acre cattle farm, which instilled a close family bond and a love for agriculture. In addition to farming, Wayne taught vocational courses, including agricultural education, for 30 years in the Coma County school system. But when he wasn't in the classroom, he could often be found teaching on his farm whether instructing his granddaughter and nephews or giving tours on his farm to military personnel and students. His passion for teaching others and helping them gain a better understanding of agriculture was always paramount. 
after his retirement from the classroom, Wayne increased his cattle herd and grew hay to provide the city of Fayetteville mounted police patrol. He was very active in the community, serving on the Cumberland County Civic Center Commission as the agricultural representative, the Cumberland County Livestock Association, and the Cumberland County Farm Advisory Board. He had a passion for being outdoors, whether farming or hunting, loved spending time in his church with his family, especially his granddaughter, Reagan. Unfortunately, Wayne passed away in 2017, leaving his, leaving his family to continue his legacy of faith, family, and farming. Today, his son and great nephew are using the lessons he taught them to continue farming, and their efforts would undoubtedly make him proud. Emmett Wayne Beard, Sr., the 2019 Cumberland County Agricultural Hall of Fame inductee, a true champion of agriculture. And I know y'all have seen this before, but I once again I want to present this to the family. This was actually presented um, on November 22nd, 2019, by Hal Broadfoot, the president of the Qantas Club of Fable, in, in recognition of lifetime contributions and accomplishments in agriculture, the Cumberland County Agricultural Hall of Fame inductee award presented to the family of Emmett Wayne Beard, Sr. like to uh, take just a moment to thank uh, Lisa Childers and all the hard work that they provide daily out at our Cumberland County Extension Service uh, as far as working with the youth and just promoting farming for Cumberland County. Uh, I'd like to thank the, all the county commissioners this evening for taking time to recognize dad and first and foremost I would like to thank God for providing me and my family with such a uh, loving godly man Wayne Beard Sr. and uh, thank each of you tonight as well. Thank you. I, I remember living on Middle Road, and I'd wake up in the morning, and Wayne would be cutting a, a, a ditch across uh, Grace Getty's yard over over the ditch and on my my property to drain that big field over there. But the next thing you knew, he'd have corn about that high. And so he was some kind of farmer. Uh, if y'all if y'all go around and, and shake hands with all these people here, they'd love to. <laughs> Let's start around at that. Emmett Wayne Beard Sr. has been selected as the 2019 Cumberland County Agriculture Hall of Fame inductee. Wayne spent his entire life on his family's farm in the Eastover community. He began farming as a young boy, helping his father with the family's cattle and row crop operation, which included tobacco, corn, soybeans, and small grains. He was a member of FFA and showed livestock in his 4-H club. He was awarded the NC State Farmer's Degree in 1964 at the age of 18. Wayne began running the family farm after his father's untimely death. Wayne graduated from Central High School and Methodist University. While continuing the demands of operating a farm, Wayne married the love of his life, Wanda, and they had two devoted children, Wayne Jr. and Janae. 
Together, the Beard family would operate and run the 100-acre cattle farm, which instilled a close family bond and love for agriculture. Some of the most memorable times I had was baling hay. Usually he would let me run the tractor and the baler, and they would pick up the square bales. I probably used the baler even more than he did. But um, I just loved the family atmosphere that we had there. In addition to farming, Wayne taught vocational courses, including agriculture education, for 30 years in the Cumberland County school system. When he wasn't in the classroom, he could often be found teaching on his farm, whether instructing his granddaughter or nephews or giving tours on his farm to military personnel and students, his passion for teaching others and helping them to gain a better understanding of agriculture was always paramount. That's the thing Dad was most proud of, was being able to share what he knew, what he had learned from his father and grandfather. Uh, he was always wanting to share his knowledge with others especially the young kids growing up today that did not have the opportunity growing up on a farm as my sister and I did. After his retirement from the classroom, Wayne increased his cattle herd and grew hay to provide for the city of Fayetteville's mounted police patrol. He was very active in the community, serving on the Cumberland County Civic Center Commission as the agricultural representative, the Cumberland County Livestock Association, and the Cumberland County Farm Advisory Board. He had a passion for being outdoors, whether farming or hunting, loved spending time in his church and with his family, especially his granddaughter, Reagan. So my grandfather made this buddy seat for me, and he made it for me because I was wanting to ride the tractor with him, but he said I would have to sit in his lap, and I didn't want to, so I started standing up, and then he said I couldn't. So then one day when I came, here and he said you want to go out and bale some hay with me i said yeah and then he surprised me with this buddy seat and i was so excited that i get to do it and then later on he added a seat belt so i could bale hay with him unfortunately wayne passed away in 2017 leaving his family to continue his legacy of faith family and farming today his son and great nephew are using the lessons he taught them to continue farming and their efforts would undoubtedly make him very proud. Emmett Wayne Beard Sr., the 2019 Cumberland County Agricultural Hall of Fame inductee, a true champion of agriculture. Hall of Fame inductees did not stop there. Uh, at this time, got a young man named Alan Horn. If you'll step forward with any members of your family you brought with you, I know I know one of them's got a camera in his hand. Johnny, come on up. Oh, he go ahead, Wes. Do whatever you want to do. You got the camera. <laughs> Farming has been a part of, of Adam Horn's family for several generations, and he is proud to continue the tradition. Adam developed a strong interest in farming at an early age while spending time on his grandparents' farm in the Wade community with his grandmother, Collier. His interest in farming was ignited by observing farmers tending fields next to his grandmother's house. As a very young child, one of his first crops was a few hills of tobacco given to him by a tobacco farmer renting the Collier farm. These tobacco plants were planted in his grandmother's front yard, much to the disbelief of other family members. He even suffered a loss with his crop, as many farmers do. He didn't have insurance. When his tobacco crop was shredded by a hailstorm. Around the age of 14, he, be he began growing squash, collards, and deer corn to earn extra money. The late Harvey Johnson, a local farmer, would take Adam's produce to sell at the farmer's market in Raleigh. Later, he began working for Bunce Brothers Farms in Stedman, gaining experience and firsthand knowledge of farming with the Bunce operation. He was encouraged along the way by long-term, long-time area farmers, Billy Culberth, Maxton Bunce, and his uncle, Wingett Collier. Reuben Cashwell has, always been, has also been an influential source of expertise providing Adam with farming advice when needed. Adam's never been one to shy away from hard work and has spent 
many long days working the fields to produce corn, soybeans, watermelons, and wheat. Today, he's growing crops on the lands once formed by his grandfather, Worth Collier, and great-grandfather, Harvey Hubbard. He also expands his operation by farming land that he rents in the area. Adam is a lieutenant with the Fayetteville Fire Department, working with the city since 2008. He was also a volunteer fireman with the Bethany Fire Department and the Stedman Fire Department prior to, prior to joining the Fayetteville Fire Department. <coughs> an, a, an active member of Concord Baptist Church, Adam is married to Felicia Cashwell Horn, daughter of Reuben and Faye Cashwell, and, his, and he has three children, a daughter, Allie, and two sons, Caden right, and, and Mason. He's the son of Johnny and Ann Horn and has one brother, Stephen. Adam, this once again has been presented to you before, but it says, Cumberland County Young Farm of the Year presented to Adam W. Horn in recognition of his outstanding contributions and accomplishments in agriculture, presented by Hal Broadfoot, President, Kiwanis Club of Fable, November 2nd, 2019. And in this time, county commissioners would, would like to salute you. Hold this in your left hand, and I'll shake your right hand. Thank you, sir. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Fairclough. Yeah. Would you have his father get in the photo, please? <laughs> Do you have somebody to operate that for you? Uh, no, we got somebody. We got somebody. Okay. <laughs> can y'all step in here so we can get. Best we're gonna look all week now. <laughs> Thank you. Department Award to Lisa uh, Childers. I don't. Okay. I don't see that one. I missed even. But where's that one? It's just one right there. Oh, it's two of them right together. Okay. I got you. Told me I didn't know I didn't know when to sit down. That's the truth. Okay, so we we're still on the subject of agriculture. And at this time, we have an award for the Cumberland County Fair. It was, it was awarded the Got to BNC Agricultural Commissioner Award for its agricultural exhibit displayed during the 2019 fair held August 30th to September 8th at the Crown Complex. This award was presented at the North Carolina Association of Agricultural Fairs Annual Convention held January 2 through 4 in Cary, North Carolina. Lisa Childers in the room. Lisa, come forward, please. 
Cumberland County Extension, headed by Ms. Lisa Childress, created a 900 square foot dairy exhibit that featured a milking booth, a live cow, grain bin, and early 20th century farm equipment, locally grown sorghum and pumpkins, and fruits and vegetables brought in as fair entries. Dairy products were on display to show farm to table aspects. Cumberland County Solid Waste hauled in 15 tons of mulch from the Wilkes Road County compost to create the soil for the display. And youth from the Cumberland County 4-H used garden tools to spread the mulch and make rows. The Junior Fair Board created an interactive family learning center to engage youth and adults. North Carolina State University's dairy unit loaned the Discover NC Dairy Kiosk. During peak hours, staff and volunteers recorded 2,438 individual interactions with the information kiosk and completed 431 virtual tours of the dairy farm. The Cumberland County Fair received the Innovation Award from the North Carolina Association of Agricultural Fairs for the Row Crops Agricultural Display at the 2018 Fair. So it looks like we took home a ton of stuff. So Lisa, at this time, present you on behalf of the Cumberland County Commission with the Got to Be NC Agricultural Commissioner Award in Coleman County Fair Category 2 in recognition of creating an event that features a deeper understanding of North Carolina agriculture and its relevance to local citizens of its great state, January 4, 2020. I'll hold you award. All right. I'd like to call Jason Wethington to the front as well. He thinks he's going to get a <laughs> um, We never build these exhibits for an award, but it certainly is exciting to be recognized with one of the state's highest honors. Creating something that will engage 24,000 people is not easy. Um, the exhibit takes many long hours, and I want to thank my extension team for their hard work and dedication. Jason Wethington puts in hundreds of hours. How many times did you have to plant sorghum for me? Um, so it's, uh, it, it is a labor of love. I want to thank Jim Grafstrom and the Crown staff. They're wonderful to work with, the staff with the county landfill, and Sally, the public information office team. Um, John is there capturing our photos the whole time. And of course, the farmers for letting me borrow things out of their, their fields. Um, it takes the whole team of county departments to make this exhibit come to life for children and families that visit the fair. Um, the farm, most children are about two to three generations removed from agriculture. And so this is a way for us to expose them, to help them understand and grow an appreciation from where their food comes from. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you to all of the departments that helped and thank you for you all for, for recognizing us tonight. <laughs> Call on Commissioner Council for the next award, please. Next recognition, I guess. Well, we can't see, can't we? <laughs> I can't see. 
I got to talk on the microphone, though. Little Miss FSU is Vanessa Lynn Hawkins. Her parents are Tony Hawkins and Lynn Kane. Are they here? Is someone here from the family? Please stand. Uh, and grandparents, Charles and Joanne Hawkins and Robert and Martha King. Congratulations to you too. Stand up back on this right here. So we can see you. <laughs> she is five years old. She's six. <laughs> Don't she be up here. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. And what's your school? Say it into the microphone. <laughs> she doesn't want to say it in the microphone. She is pre-K. She must have just turned. She is kindergarten. Okay, I'm sorry. Hobbies, arts and crafts, traveling, and just having a fun time. Miss Preteen FSU. is Taylor Renee Gaddy. Her parents are Bradford and Tasha Gaddy. Anybody here? Thank you. Um, Julius and Trevor Gaddy, grandparents. They're not here. Okay, and Linwood and Tipsy Richardson's. She is 10 years old. She is a fifth grader at Howard Hall Classical Elementary. Her hobbies are reading, writing, acting, especially with the Fayetteville Little Theater, playing the piano, and Girl Scouts. This information is submitted by Ms. Mally Monroe. Stand up, Ms. Monroe. And her husband supports her, James Monroe, in this. This is hard work, becoming Little Miss FSU and Miss Preteen. FSU. My grandson was long years ago, 14. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> Back in the olden days. And we enjoyed it. But thank you so much for participating at Fayetteville State University. We are very happy to have you. Would you come up? And I think we're going to take a picture right in front of the board. And uh, He just wanted you all and not us yet. Oh, okay. Cut all these guys off with your women on.
this time we'd like to recognize a, some special guests that are in the audience tonight. I've got some members of the Human Relations Commission. Will you please stand up? And the head man himself. The library trustees, we've got a couple of those, I think. Okay. And I see the sheriff. Sheriff, will you stand up and wave, please? We know you. Okay, there he is. Please stand up and wave, Sheriff, so we can see you back there. <laughs> sheriff Ennis Wright, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming, Sheriff, and uh, bringing your fine staff here tonight. Um, it, are there any other members of any of our boards and commissions that I've not seen yet? Okay, thank you. Thank you all for coming. At this time, we'll have our public comment period. Um, on, on our night meeting, we allow 15 minutes for public comment. Uh, each speaker will get uh, a certain portion of that, and uh, I would ask uh, Manager Amy Cannon to please read our policy. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you just stated, the public comment period is an opportunity for the Board of Commissioners to hear uh, from the citizens. Each speaker will be given a maximum time of three minutes to make their remarks. We ask that each citizen, as they come to the lectern, give us their name and address. Thank you. Name and address. Okay, at this point, we'll open the uh, public comment period. Do we have any speakers, Ms. Clark? We have one speaker this evening, uh, Mr. Bob Leach. Bob Leach, okay. Welcome, Bob. Good evening, my name is Bob Leach. Okay. I live in uh, 1473 Middlesbrough Drive in Fayetteville. I want to take this time to thank you for allowing me to speak. My uh, subject of concern is something that hasn't been done much, um, let's say, research on. On Crystal Springs Road, where our backyard looks right on the Crystal Springs Road, there's a lot of pedestrian traffic, a lot of pedestrians. As, I, as far as I know and the research I, that I've done, there has been no pedestrian fatalities or casualties on Crystal Springs. What is the possibility of perhaps having a sidewalk put in on Crystal Springs allowing folks to walk comfortably and safely up and down Crystal Springs Road? In our society, we have a tendency to wait until something happens. Unfortunately, sometimes it results in someone's life or many lives thereafter before we correct problems. I like to see that we get ahead of it and step in front of it and let's see what we can do to make it work for the pedestrians and for people in general to take a walk down Crystal Springs. You, you still got over a minute left. <laughs> oh, I do? Okay. <laughs> While we're on the subject of Crystal Springs Road, oh, I forgot there's a timer right there. That's cool. While we're on the subject of Crystal Springs Road, I personally think, and I've talked to many residents from different subdivisions, that the lighting at night, the street lights that are on Crystal Springs, there's not enough of them. If they're not lighting up the appropriate areas, for an example, the entrances to Sub subdivisions at night, uh, Acorn Ridge being one of them, Brookshire being the other, they're not lit up. And that's causing a problem for the residents of those subdivisions at night and for anybody that wants to come visit them. Nine times out of ten, they drive right past it because it's not lit up. Okay. That's you. all I have. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank Appreciate you. it. We don't usually answer. We take we take in the information. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Next speaker. There are no further speakers. <clears throat> no further speakers at this time. We'll close the uh, fifteen minute uh, period. Item number one, uh, Mr. Chair's approval of the agenda. Okay. Do I have a motion? I move. Second. Moved and second to approve the agenda. In discussion. All in favor. 
Item two. I, item number two is a presentation, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, this evening, the Cumberland County Complete Count Committee is bringing forth an attached resolution. We have our co-chairs here with us this evening, our library director, Jody Rishisher, and Dr. Wade. Please come forward. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. We represent the uh, Complete Count Committee. I'm one of the co-chairs, and Dr. Anthony Wade is the other co-chair. Um, we have a brief report for you on the on the uh, Complete Count Committee. Oh, we have a brief report for you. Are you? Uh, will you consider the resolution first, or how would you like to proceed? Why don't you, I'll make a recommendation, give the report, and then yeah. at the end, that the last action will be to ask them to take action. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to my co-chair. Yeah. Good evening, <clears throat> excuse Good evening. me, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chairman, members of the commission. It's a pleasure to be here with you again. And one of the things that I want to do tonight as my role as the Complete Count Committee Co-Chair for Cumberland County is introduce the newest member of our team. This is Nakia Smith. And Nakia is a graduate of University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. She's worked in a number of volunteer positions here in the county, the last being serving as a, the registrar for Grace College of Divinity. And she is fully committed to working with area organizations to ensure that we get the best count possible for Cumberland County. And we just wanted you to meet this fine young individual, Nakia Smith. So, okay. Welcome. Thank you. And you, you have grab bags there? Okay, so, so she brought gifts. <laughs> so, can, can she approach? Sure. Absolutely. Okay, so. With gifts? Are you kidding? Yeah. <laughs> gifts or photos? <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Just to bring you up to date, we've been very active in the last couple of months. Um, and thanks to the PIO office, they, we have a um, very attractive logo based on the Census Bureau guidelines that we can now use for our own purposes. On January 13th, there was a big event in the uh, parking lot uh, between the public health and uh, DSS in the, in the uh, uh, space in between those two buildings. The Census Bureau and NC Works folks teamed up for a job recruitment event, and um, uh, uh, more, there were more than 100 applicants that day. You can see that um, Dr. Wade was there speaking to the media and trying to avoid the uh, torrential rainstorms that were occurring that afternoon. So the um, Five C's, that's what we're calling ourselves, uh, steering committee met in January, and we're continuing the planning and strategizing for reaching the targeted populations for the census count. Uh, we just recently set another meeting uh, at the end of this month. Uh, we were joined, um, our newest member actually, uh, actually is a uh, FSU census fellow named Julius Britton, Britman. Uh, he's a pre-law student, and he's working with uh, marketing staff in city and county to develop a social media messaging that, that will, we know will educate and persuade college students that the census is very important and worth their time. Also, our, my co-chair, Dr. Wade, attended the NC Counts Convention on February 4th, presented at the Mayor's Coalition, and also presented at the Great greater Fayetteville United meetings. 
the uh, county and city planning department are working together to provide the Census Bureau with some requested information on what they call group quarters. Uh, think of assisted living facilities, shelter soup kitchens, um, uh, where the homeless reside, uh, and transitor other transitory locations like campgrounds, motels, and RV parks. Uh, Dr. Wade also um, has uh, made some really important contacts with the Hispanic community and the, and the organizations that serve them through NALIO and Latinos United. So uh, that's, those are going to be some strong partnerships that we'll be able to draw upon. He has also made contacts with the uh, Fort Bragg Garrison Commander's Office, and there will be a presentation next month to that group. Um, that concludes my report, but I need to also um, introduce uh, Sharon Covington and Joanne Bass, who are present, and they're both uh, Census Bureau representatives. They're in the back of the room there. Welcome. And they're great partners and wonderful to work with. We're, we're really very lucky. So thank you for your time. Appreciate it very much. Thank you, Ms. Judy. Uh, at this time, we, uh, we have the uh, resolution before us. Uh, have you all had a chance to read it? Are there any comments before we uh, take a vote? Move to approve the resolution. Okay. Second. Moved and second to approve the resolution. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Item, num item number three is your consent agenda. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Item number four are your public hearings. Our first case is an uncontested rezoning case, case P2001. Good evening, commissioners. So as stated, this is case P2001, the first case for 2020 year. This is un uh, an uncontested case. Uh, so I'll just go over just briefly, just so you can get an idea of what we're talking about. So the, it's, uh, the area in the county that we're looking at is between Hope Mills and the city of Fayetteville along Cumberland Road. Uh, so just to give you a little bit of background, uh, th this is Cumberland Road that you see right here. This is Owen Drive that you see, so it sits almost at the crossroads of that. If you guys are familiar with the geography of this area, this is a Circle K that kind of sits right here. Uh, so the property sits just behind it. So on this piece of property are only two things. You have a billboard that sits basically right here on the corner. And then you have a single family home that sits on this. Both of these items are non-conforming under our current zoning right now. So the purpose of this request is the applicant wants to uh, change out the existing billboard that's there. And in order to do that, he has to come in for a rezoning. So the, so the subsequent decision that you guys would give this evening is that if you approve the rezoning, uh, then he would have to go to the Board of Adjustment to get a special use permit in order to, put, uh, to switch the billboard that's currently out there right now. So uh, when staff looked at the plans, it is compliant with the Southwest Cumberland plan. It, it is also compliant with the Cumberland Road Business Street plan that you guys adopted a few years back. Uh, staff um, didn't see any problems with the request, so we are um, recommending it. It went to the planning board with a, um, a unanimous decision to move forward. So if you want me to open up the case, I can go into more detail if you, if you desire for me to do so. And the applicant is here, I believe, if you have any questions of them as well. Okay. At this time, I'll open up the public hearing. Are there any speakers? There are no speakers. No speakers. I'll close, close to the public hearing. Before we take a vote, Mr. Adams, did you have a... I just want to, is it the same size billboard, bigger billboard blocking something? I mean, what? once we rezone and put the billboard up, is it to the same um, dimensions, bigger? Because, I mean, it could whether it blocks anything. Do we have any control over that part once it's done? We have size specifications. Yeah, so, I mean, like, you can't go beyond the size specifications. It's my... Okay. Uh, it's my understanding that he also wants to switch it out for a digital one. So it's a it's like a wooden old style type billboard now. Uh, it's my understanding it'd go back with a steel type support with a a digital screen. Facing on drive or I mean. Uh, I believe it would be yes. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out coming down whether it blinds anybody or what you know where have we looked at any of that? Currently, it looks. This is the plan that was submitted. So it's my. Um, I don't know if he's doing a two-face one or not. I don't think we went into that much detail at this particular point, but is he doing a two-face? Yes. Yes. Okay, there you go. <clears throat> Any other questions for the director? Okay, if not, is there a motion? 
Motion to approve. You got to need to read it into the record. Okay. Second. Yep. Got a second. Okay. In the case P2001, I move to approve the rezoning from C1P Plan Local Business District to CP Plan Commercial CZ Conditional Zoning for all allowed uses within the CP District and find the request is consistent with the adopted Southwest Cumberland Land Use Plan in 2013, which designates this partial as mixed use development. Although commercial uses are typically of a higher nature in a mixed use development, heavier commercial uses are permitted. This request is also consistent with the Cumberland Road Business Street Plan's recommendation of encouraging and conditional zoning requests along Cumberland Road to better manage development. The board further finds the request is reasonable and in public interest as the district requested is in harmony with existing land uses in the area as well as existing zoning. The parcel is near a heavily trafficked intersection in an area that is already transitioning from residential to commercial, commercial development and the size of the partial and setback requirements will mitigate any commercial development that would be too large to fit with the character of that area. That's my motion. Second. <clears throat> Been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion or questions, comments? If not, all in favor? Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, sir. Next the item, Ms. Cannon. Item five are our items of business. The first one is item A, consideration of an agreement with the Town of Spring Lake for Community Development Block Grant Public Facility Program. We'll ask our Community Development Director, Ms. D. Taylor, to come forward. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, what you have in your packet is a copy of the agreement with the town of Spring Lake and this is for the installation of a sanitary sewer system that will be located along uh, Mitchley Street in Spring Lake. Um, the town did submit a project application in response to a request for proposal and the project uh, was determined eligible for funding through the Community Development Block Grant Program and therefore we are requesting uh, the board to approve the contract uh, with the town of Spring Lake in the amount not to exceed one hundred fifteen thousand six hundred seventy six dollars Any questions for Miss Taylor? If not do I hear a motion I move that We approve the contract with the town of Spring Lake in the amount not to exceed one hundred fifteen thousand six hundred and seventy six dollars second Okay, moved and seconded. Any, any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Item 5B is consideration of budget ordinance amendment 200-011 to provide market adjustment to law enforcement salaries. As you know, uh, commissioners, we have continued to struggle and have challenges with employee recruitment and retention. Over the last year, Human Resources has looked specifically in the area of law, law enforcement and detention officer salaries. That information revealed that our entry pay is lower than comparable county, counties and the average pay is also below market. In an effort to have some impact, positive impact on the tenure for law enforcement and the detention center, we're recommending that you adjust the entry level detention officer pay uh, to 36,500. In addition, we're requesting for all de sworn officers, deputy sheriff, um, captain and below an increase for starting pay to $39,237,000. We believe that um, this is a step in the right direction in the process to uh, begin impacting positively our recruitment and retention. We will continue to explore a variety of options to retain um, our employees. So the, 
recommendation this evening is to approve the budget revision and the amount of three hundred and fifty four thousand two hundred and thirty three dollars I'll be happy to answer any questions oh mr. chair I would like to thank uh, the sheriff and his staff um, we have worked cooperatively on this for the last couple of months and come to a joint recommendation I do want to thank uh, the sheriff and his staff okay. any questions or comments from Ms. Cannon Booth. Will this also cover the detention center? Yes, sir. The first okay. part. Yeah, they were 36 it, it, it would be my pleasure to make this motion. I second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the uh, adjustment. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Say aye. I mean, yeah. raise your hand. Aye, too. <laughs> Sheriff, congratulations on hard work. Uh, do you, do you want to have any comments, or do you want to have anything to say? <laughs> I mean, we've already passed it, but I, I should have allowed you to speak earlier. Uh, but uh, that's right. Again, like uh, Miss Amy said, I want to thank her, uh, Miss Garnell, and their staff for, like Amy said, we've been working for a while on this, and uh, we came to agreement to uh, what we need to do. As she said before, we have having a hard time for us recruitment it's throughout the nation. Uh, and all we're doing is, uh, AC's doing is going from one to another. One guy raises his salary, to, they go over to there at AC. But I think with, with this that we're showing the officers that we do care, that the uh, commissioners care about them, uh, especially when she said we need to retain these folks that's got the seniority around here. Because we're losing a lot of folks with experience uh, that go into other agencies. But again, I want to thank Ms. Amy. I want to thank Ms. Cardinal and her staff. Also, I want to thank you guys uh, and uh, Ms. Jeanette uh, for uh, what y'all do for us. Again, thank you. Well, sir, we salute you and the great job that you and your fine staff are doing, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Item 5C is consideration of the transfer of property located at 707 and 711 Executive Place to the Cumberland County Hospital System Incorporated. Mr. Moorfield. Good evening, Commissioners. At the uh, first meeting of this month, you had an update on the, the process that's been involved in the transfer of the remaining properties that you had directed to be transferred back in November 2017. This is the last step uh, for the executive place property, and you have for your consideration a deed uh, and an agreement for uh, maintenance and, and the allocation of certain costs after the transfer and the uh, certificate of confirmation of the publication. And it was published in this notice was published in the Fayetteville Observer on February the 6th. It is not a public hearing, Mr. Chairman, but you, it would be appropriate for you to ask if anyone wanted to comment on it after I, I, I finish speaking. But uh, this, just uh, the, the guts of this, the deed and the agreement are pretty much consistent with everything else that's been done in the past for the, for the transfer of the uh, hospital system. It's all done pursuant to the requirements in the 2006 master transfer agreement when 71 parcels were, were transferred. It has to be used by the hospital for the hospital purposes, and if it ceases to be used to that, it will revert back to the county. That's with all these properties. Uh, this includes both the large office building that's uh, in which Alliance Healthcare is, is, is now a tenant in about half that building. And because of that, the county is retaining a, a leasehold interest in the area uh, occupied by Alliance and will continue to do so until that lease terminates. They have it up until December 31st, 2023, uh, if, if they stay that long. And, and the county would continue to be the landlord and the the smaller building is, will continue to be used by the county for the county offices that are there for, for, for as long as we do that. The maintenance agreement addresses the uh, allocation of the maintenance of those buildings because of that. It also establishes that the hospital will be, be responsible for all the exterior, including the parking lot and, and that sort of stuff. And one, uh, one condition on this is that the, the hospital would, ex would accept this property as it is in, in, in its existing state without any further uh, expenditures by the county. Any questions or comments, discussion? If not, do I hear a motion? You would ask, you would ask if, they, if, if anyone wants to comment on this. Sir, it's not a public hearing, but it, it is a, it was noticed for that purpose. Is, there, is, is anybody in the audience here to uh, comment on this issue? 
Se seeing none, uh, is there a motion? I'll make the motion to approve. Is there a second? Motion. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Okay, thank you, board. Item Kenna? number item number six are the board's nominations. Okay, do I see any nominations? Mr. Chairman, I would nominate uh, Deanna Rosario for the uh, Joint Appearance Commission. Okay, that's one. Got two. Anybody else? Mr. Chairman, I would say there's another one coming off in 2020, so it actually would be two if you look at it. I would just move those two to the next meeting that we have and allow the board to make any nominations they would like to on that. That's fine. Anybody so have the one to that? Do the, the one and then That's fine. Another yeah. one's going to come up in February, about this month. So. Okay, tonight's nominations will close with one, and uh, we'll go to item seven, appointments. Mr. Vice Chairman. Yes. Uh, we have um, an equal number of uh, nominees as, uh, to each of the categories. Um, and it's to the Transportation Advisory Board, which is four vacancies. The Mid-Carolina Council of Governments uh, appointee, uh, Tracy Honeycutt. The DSS Workforce uh, Work First Representative, Dana Davis. Aging Programs Representative, Amber Gulch, G-U-L-C-H. And County Health Director Designee, Sharon Batten, I would move for uh, approval of, uh, that they be appointed. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Ms. Item, Cannon. Item number eight is closed session. We have attorney client matters pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143 318 11 A3. Okay, do I have a motion to go in closed session? Mr. Yes. Mr. Mr. Chairman, motion. before we do that, you got your uh, youth council members. That's right. Before we let, do that. That's right. We're going to let them go home, aren't we? Yes. You should make them stay. Yeah. <laughs> Depends on what they say. Right, I skipped right over that. It's my bad. That's quite all right. You, you guys have the floor. What have you learned? What have you seen? What would you do differently? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Um, so I really enjoy learning about the law enforcement salaries. I find that very interesting because I was actually interested in that line of work oh, for a good while. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So she I found out the salary. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can get another increase. We'll get another increase before you get there. Man. Yeah, so I was actually thinking about going into that line of work for a while and possibly being going into law enforcement. So I found it really interesting learning about the different salaries and how y'all are actually approving it being raised. So I enjoyed learning about that. Um, I also enjoyed learning about that too, but also hearing about like the billboard that's out near Owen and Cumberland Road was something that kind of like intrigued me as well because like out in that area it is kind of just like open. So I like really liked that. And then I agreed with the um, law enforcement. I liked how y'all like approved that because they do jobs that some of us really don't want to do. Like the detentional officers, like we don't really want to do that. Most people don't. So I think the people that do, they deserve a little bit more than what they were getting. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you next time. Okay, now, uh, is there a motion to go to closed session under the statute for previous society? Yes, so move. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Okay, the board will now go in closed session.
I'm always on TV. <laughs> if it's a photo op. Second. Move to adjourn. All in favor? Second. I second. All in favor of the motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn. We just did. We just did. We're adjourned.